All right, oh. let's uh, let's shift gears here. Um, we got to talk about some food, Jim. What's cooking? Uh, you got something a little different for us today. Yeah, this came out really good. Um, again, went to Wegmans to see what looked good in the fishmonger case or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and um, there was striped bass. So I said, okay, striped bass. Um, I had uh, been wanting to roast cabbage for whatever reason. Um, so I figured I might go ahead and do that with the striped bass and then put it on top of, uh, didn't want to, I want to do something extra. So there's a thing called rice kanji, which um, is basically you cook rice with uh, a squash, but you, you kind of liquefy the squash. And I didn't go that route. So what I came up with was like a rice with butternut squash and parsnips in with the rice to give it a nice flavor and then i also decided okay this stripe well, how am i going to season the striped bass i figured i'd keep it simple but i would create a uh, uh orange sauce i guess is the best way to say it and so that's what i did and i put it all together and it came out really good you would never think that all those combinations would be anything that well a lot of, i would be like you know what? i'm gonna have this tonight a lot of cooking videos like i could have done just a video about the roasted cabbage okay um or the rice but i tend to film these videos when i'm cooking dinner the whole meal yeah the whole meal and i try tend to put it all in one pot <laughs> um so sometimes it gets bowl. a little out of hand and when i'm in cooking there's a lot going on but this time it came out really really good really good hope you'll enjoy watching this Striped bass with squash and parsnip rice and roasted cabbage steaks. Oh, so you're there's right, Paul. Striped bass fillets, and we start by with some fennel seeds and caraway seeds to uh, create a little uh, dressing for the cabbage before we roast it. R roasted red pepper, crushed red pepper, excuse me, and some cinnamon and sugar and some salt. I'm some starting salt. to know like your seasonings, like your core ones that you keep in your house. Yes, uh, crushed ground black pepper and then a healthy dose of olive oil and you're basically we're creating a, a coating for Shush. the cabbage um, a little red wine vinegar which wakes everything up in that bowl it does make a difference even though it's not a lot and vinegar is also something you would think about eating with cabbage on St. Patrick's Day for example yeah. um, so first we just cut up some steaks from the cabbage it's nice mm -hmm. and easy uh, this is very easy uh, preheat the oven to 425 and and we'll coat those cabbage steaks and we'll throw them in and forget about it for about half an hour so we're going to do both sides and the nice thing too about this is all this dressing kind of bleeds down into the cabbage you know in the layers of the cabbage and so got both sides and there it goes into the oven and now we can get to work on some other stuff beautiful so this ended up being a little more time intensive than I had hoped. Uh, I had to peel the squash and, and clean the squash and the parsnips before I could even start everything else. If you did else. this again, would you have done all that first? Well, I am doing it first. Oh. I am doing it first. This is like all the prep work. God, I thought you I wanted to get the cabbage in the oven first and then I got did this. And so I'm basically just grating everything where if you wanted to make a true congee, um, you would probably blend it hmm. first. You might even cook it first and then blend it. Um, and then, so we got ginger root, a lot of that involved. And then I throw all that into a saute pan with olive oil and butter and season it with salt, pepper, and, um, crushed red pepper mm -hmm. and sweet curry sauce. Nice. <laughs> Just a little. From Penzi's? Yep. <laughs> and you can, you know, they have curry, curry spice it your mccormick's or your grocery aisle that stuff's good too um but it curry spice does tend to uh vary so you find one you like and stick with it so i take out the cabbage and flip it and then i put some of this hot honey from wegmans on top too just to add another little hmm. level of flavor to it and then now back in for about another 20 minutes and now we put the vegetable broth in and we start because we're going to end up putting rice right in there nice with the squash and parsnips and so we need to 
get that up to a boil. And in the meantime now, I start preparing stuff for the sauce that's going to go over the bass. So garlic, onion, um, it's going to be some red Fresno peppers as well. All diced up pretty nicely because it's going to be a sauce. Beautiful. There's the red Fresno peppers. I like to cut them lengthwise twice and then just go down the line. It creates a little diced perversion. So now the... Whoops. Yeah, it's lost a little there. <laughs> that is up to a boil, and we take some jasmine rice, and we just add it to the liquid and stir it around, and then you take it right up. You turn the heat right off and cover it and set it aside. Is it starting to smell good in there in that kitchen? Yeah, the cabbage smelled great, actually, honestly. So that's done now. Um, so I just set that aside and get to work on the sauce some more, some carrot, uh, that Garlic is now getting grated down finely instead of chopping it. And then some more ginger root, which uh, almost turns into a liquid when you Interesting. grate it like that. And then a little salt and pepper on both sides of the striped bass filet. I removed the skin too. Um, I would have preferred to cook it with the skin on, but um, my wife does not like the skin. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so then just coat it with the flour, white all-purpose flour, and then we get ready to fry it. Avocado oil doesn't really matter. You can use any Got kind of oil. Got a little healthier this time with that. With avocado, it's not. It doesn't really <laughs> matter. Um, there's some butter. That's not so healthy. <laughs> there it is. Undone. Yeah. Classic. <laughs> and then uh, into the hot frying pan goes the fish. And I did overcrowd it maybe a little bit. Because I added two more to that. And then uh, about five minutes. And then you flip each one. Now that flour is such a light breading that it doesn't, you don't really see it. But it does create a little bit of a crunchy texture to it. And then uh, when it's done, we remove them. And we're going to make the sauce right in that same pan that we cooked the bass in. So in goes the onions and the red Fresno peppers and the carrots and the garlic and the ginger. And then we just start to saute that down. And it's pretty. This yeah. is a pretty dish. Yeah, I'd say. This is my favorite part. I really had fun making the cabbage, but I liked making this sauce. So I got a sumo mandarin orange. You can use any orange. They had sumo mandarin oranges at the at wow. Wegmans. And they're really juicy. A little more expensive. They're huge. But uh, yeah, big and juicy. Mm -hmm. And so I grated some of the zest. And now I'm just squeezing in the the juice and then some more of that same sweet curry spice and mix it around a little bit and then next we're going to go in there with some coconut milk so does this finish have a very sweet taste to it or no yes the coconut makes it sweet the orange juice makes it sweet but you know with the rice and the cabbage um it's not an overly sweet i was gonna say that, that Got deal. quite a bit of counter bitterness in there. Yeah, and the and the striped bass really doesn't have much flavor. It's a white fish, you know. So I I dice up some bar some basil and now some parsley. The basil is going in the sauce. The parsley is going on top. So now you see how that cooks down with that coconut milk. I mean oh, that yeah. I, that came out really good. And so I just add the basil at the very end as I turn the heat off, and um, that is done. So I think we're about ready to put it all on the plate. The bowl is it going to be a bowl? Well, it's a hybrid. Oh, first some uh, mandarin oranges going in the sauce to finish it. And again, the heat's off at this point, so I'm not really cooking those oranges. I'm just kind of dropping them in. And I did, I did a couple times stir it while this was cooking. I didn't just set it aside with the lid on. You don't want the rice to stick, but um, pretty easy once you get to that point. And so now into the bowl it goes. And again, I make a three times serving, <laughs> you know. This is enough for three people in one bowl, but uh, I did eat most of mine. And there goes one of the cabbage steaks, which came out really, really good. I was waiting for that tiger sauce. <laughs> yep, a little sweet chili. <laughs> Basically, it's sweet chili sauce. It doesn't. Have, tiger sauce is my favorite brand. Some people make their own sweet chili sauce that I watch online. And then, uh, you know, so you could use half rice and, and just the one filet and the cabbage. <laughs> and that's a serving you get at a restaurant. I go with two. And now we start to ladle this Yum. delicious orange coconut sauce on top. Ginger. 
A lot um, of creation. It was it was really good. There's I was lot. gonna say this might be the most creative one I've seen so far. This has really got got a lot going on. And then the parsley on top, and then you're done. And um and yeah, I loved I loved the way the cabbage steak came out. I mean uh, it's it's just an easy way to make a nice side for something and the sauce came out great on the on the fish and the rice was also really, really good. It just you could taste a little bit of the parsnip, a little bit of the squash. So it's more than just rice. It right. was uh Gonna say this is the question I always come back to when yeah. when we play these is is there anything you'd do differently and I feel like I know the answer to this one is there anything you would do differently well, what do you next think time of, what do you think I would do different I don't know honestly I, that <laughs> one seems you seem most pleased with that one versus the the last few we've seen around depends on the rating we didn't do yeah, a rating. I mean we don't know the rating oh yet. nine out of ten for this one I think that this was one that you could order in a restaurant and get it and think wow this is a great restaurant you're I like mean, giving yourself a pat on the back high marks. right chef's kiss so you wouldn't do you probably wouldn't do much different with that then um, you're that happy with how it turned out yeah I guess I am uh, um <laughs> striped bass is not like that should have been the start of the show right Straight bass, you would think, but right. it was really just kind of a vessel to put the sauce on, hmm. um, you know, a conduit to for everything else. Um, I really, I don't know if the cabbage goes well with that dish the way I had it. It did, but <laughs> I mean, I think maybe that roasted cabbage steak would go good with um, maybe an actual steak, yeah, and then um, you know, a green meat. vegetable on the side or something. It was. I enjoyed making the cabbage steaks because I've never done that before and they came out really, really good and fennel and caraway seeds aren't things I use much and you could really taste it in the cabbage. Um, you could also, instead of making cabbage steaks, you could really just kind of dice them up and make like a hash Yeah. and might have, and still, you could still roast it. Or I could have, after it was roasted, diced it up a little bit or chopped it up a little bit because it was kind of hard to eat you, you needed a knife to cut <laughs> through the cabbage right yeah. you could, it was tough to cut through with a fork but i found that if you got one you know how the cabbage is like a it's like a yep. old tree with yeah. you where you age a tree with the rings mm -hmm. so if you took if you started rolling up one of those rings on your fork when you got to the end it came off so oh, that okay. was one way to eat it but it was kind of tough tip. tough to eat it um easily without a knife but um, now, last question with St. Patrick's Day coming up around the corner. Would you have thought maybe a cabbage steak would go better with some corned beef than yes. your average? Yes, it did. That, that was a little out of place with hmm. the bass and the rice. But now, yeah, it's making. I am a cabbage girl. I love eating corned beef cabbage, obviously. It seemed to work just say. fine. Yeah. No, it, it did. It, 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 just it, fine. it, it like, did. What? It did. Um, that but like I said, if you excited. were to go to a restaurant, I th I don't know if you'd ever see something like that paired together. Ooh, you would you see the cabbage it. steak as maybe an extra or an appetizer side. Right. And I thought I uh, I thought that maybe you know if you were to serve the uh, like a cabbage steak just on its own as an appetizer First. course, then mm -hmm. maybe you would just put a dollop of some type of. Uh, yogurt or, or yeah. sour cream sauce with some dill maybe mm -hmm. um or some more of that fennel uh, but um and the honey at the end was a really nice touch i think too didn't didn't necessarily need it but to put it back into the oven with that little bit of honey on it finished it really nicely um and the i can't tell you how good that rice was the um, rice seems like it could have been a standalone like that rice yeah. could be paired with a whole bunch of different stuff and yeah like a great. steak or chicken yeah um and it worked well with the sauce that i that i made too with the orange sauce and the coconut milk and it was good it was really good it was one of those things that when i was done i was surprised myself at how good it was well i'm glad you got to enjoy